Welcome back to episode number three of my Road to Dip WSET vlog. For those who don't yet know, the Diploma in Wines through WSET is an expert wine accreditation. It's the last bit of education I need before I'm eligible to enroll to the Institute of Masters of Wine. Enrolling for the Diploma is going to be a very difficult task if I don't have your help. So what I've done is create a crowdfunding campaign on Backer Buddy where you'll be able to donate towards my tuition. All the information and the links required to make a donation will be found across all my social media platforms. I'd like to send out a massive shout out to all of you out there that have already been kind enough to step forward and make a donation towards my campaign. I'd also like to point out that these videos would not be possible if it wasn't for the generosity of some of these amazing producers around the Western Cape. So the idea is to taste 12 amazing wines over 12 weeks and evaluate these wines according to the WSET systematic approach to tasting after which I'll be able to assess the wine's quality as well as its readiness for drinking. Every one of the wines that I taste over the 12 weeks will be included in a mixed case of 12 which you can get your hands on. All you need to do is make a small contribution towards my campaign. So it brings me great pleasure to introduce you wine number three, Post House Penny Black. The name Post House comes from the fact that the winery used to operate many years ago as post office to the missionary community of Wraithby in Stellenbosch. The original red post box is actually still on the farm to date. The name Penny Black refers to the very first stamp ever printed back in 1840. The stamp featured the head of Queen Victoria and was printed in all black. The stamp itself also only cost one penny, therefore leading to the name Penny Black. The wine itself is quite a peculiar red blend, featuring varietals such as Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Petit Vido, Shiraz, as well as Chenin Blanc. Yes, you heard me correctly, Chenin Blanc. Now you might be sitting there going, but why Chenin Blanc, Gareth? Well, I'm happy that you asked. The inclusion of Chenin Blanc is actually going to give way to an easier entry on the palate. The other varietals that it's featuring within this wine are some seriously dominant varietals. The Shannon should also add to a nice long length that you'll pick up in this wine, as well as add to the wine's complexity. So stop hating and start appreciating. The owner of Post House, Nick Gerbers, actually studied BCom accounting as well as graphic design, therefore making Nick a self-taught winemaker. Nick manages to strike a perfect balance between his artistic flair and the technicalities that come with winemaking. So when you taste the wine for the first time, every sip that you take ends up being one of Nick's creative masterstrokes on your palate which plays as a blank canvas to his winemaking masterclass. That being said, how's about we cracking on with that evaluation? that I finally evaluated the wine, let's get down to my notes. For the colour, I gave the wine deep ruby. On the nose, the wine has a medium plus aroma intensity with aromas of black cherry, toffee apple, ripe black plum, as well as a touch of white pepper, charred wood and hints of dark chocolate. This wine carries amazing depth when it comes to its aroma profile. Because the wine shows both primary and secondary aromas on the nose, we say that the wine is a developing wine. On the palate, I said that the wine is dry, it has medium plus acidity, has a medium plus tannic structure, which is actually very, very fine. And this comes down to the fact that Nick takes a very gentle approach when it comes down to the pressing of his grapes. By pressing gently, you're going to be extracting softer tannins as well as less of those undesired tastes and tones within the wine. Just getting off the topic quickly, for those of you who have been to Post House, you'll know that the wines and the farm itself are guarded by three very big bootables, one of which is named Penny Black, which gets me onto the alcohol of the wine. The alcohol carries about 15% worth, which is quite high, giving the wine a very full and voluptuous body. Rest assured that if you drink enough of this wine, you'll be barking like Penny too. On the palate, I also said that the wine carries a pronounced flavor intensity. Flavors which include black cherry, cranberry, prune, stewed fruits, as well as a touch of nutmeg and elements of dark chocolate. The flavor intensity experienced on the palate is helped along by the fact that the wine is naturally fermented and wines which are naturally fermented are able to really display terroir as well as the flavor profiles of those individual grape varietals. The fact that this wine is unfiltered will help with great texture on the palate as well as that flavor intensity. This wine carries great structure as well as stability seeing that it's undergone 18 to 20 months worth of barrel maturation. The wine also boasts quite a powerful and long finish. 
When it comes to the assessment of quality of the wine, we use what we call the Blick system. Blick standing for B, balance, L for length, I for intensity, and C for complexity. I gave the wine a point for balance, a point for length, a point for intensity, as well as a point for complexity. Therefore, giving the wine an overall quality assessment of outstanding. That's two outstanding wines in a row. I know what it looks like. I associate myself with only premium wines. For the readiness of drinking, I said the wine drinks incredibly well now, but he's gonna benefit with some further aging. And this, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the conclusion of episode number three. And before I love and leave you today, I just want to remind you that there's no standard when it comes to your wine enjoyment. And remember, be kind and drink good wine. That's tasty.